एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू दिस न्यू चैप्टर लॉगर दिस इज अगेन वन ऑफ द फंडामेंटल चैप्टर्स वेर वील बी लर्निंग अबाउट सिंगल्टन डिजाइन पैटर्न विल बी यूजिंग लॉगर एज अ रेफरेंस और एज अ स्मॉल एप्लीकेशन विच विल बी बिल्डिंग विल सी वट आर द फ्लॉज देन विल सी हाउ सिंगल्टन पैटर्न कम्स टू द हेल्प वेर ऑल सिंगल्टन पैटर्न इज बींग यूज वाई इज इट बींग यूज सो विल बी कोडिंग एवरीथिंग आई बी शोइंग यू लाइव वट इशूज कम्स and at the end i'll be giving you a small exercise so let's start with the lessons we are taking up a small problem so what is logger you all would have heard this word and seen also a logger is an important component actually when it comes to any system including banks for compliance troubleshooting security performance we are going to implement a logger for a bank where we just log three basic things amount withdrawal amount deposited and amount transferred to any other bank account right we log just these three things so let's build a class diagram in this complete application we want to log everything into a single file logger would definitely have a file name where it wants to log file name would be constant because we want to log everything to the single file so we'll make it final final file name would be of type string so string file name so to log or to write to some file we most of the time use print writer if you don't know what print writer is it's a library which gives us a way to write into a file and of course format it so it gives us formatting features also it will have an instance of print writer so let's keep it private of course constructor would be there now to talk about logger i think these data members should be fine we have the file name we have the writer to log or to write into this file so let's talk about the functions that this logger does so first is we have to log the withdrawals so let's make a function log withdraw the return type of this method should be void because we don't want any return so what will it take as an argument since we want to log withdraw so of course from which account is that it has been withdrawn from so let's keep it string account and the other thing could be amount how much amount has been withdrawn so amount okay other function or other method should be deposition so we have to log how much is deposited so void log deposit again i feel the same parameter should be there which account money has been deposited to so we'll want a account and we want an amount okay third function that our logger does was transferring it was logging the transfer of amount again the return type should be void let's make the method name as log transfer so it will take i feel two accounts from which account it has been sent to which other account and how much is the amount so one should be sender receiver and the amount so i feel we are pretty much done with the logger let's so by looking at the class diagram let's just write the code so since the first part was string or uh, file name so let's keep it private and since uh, file name is going to be constant or the same uh, so keep it let's keep it final let's name it log.txt okay so the other thing was it was having a print writer which would write into the file which we just mentioned above so private print writer print writer oh need not to keep it final so let's just have a quick constructor so public logger we have to initialize this print writer so for that let's have a file writer file writer fw equals new file writer and this will take a file name so file name okay why is it showing an error let's see okay we need to surround it with a try catch block we are done and let's just initialize print writer now print writer equals new print writer and we'll take a file writer and of course we need to turn auto flush as true so if you don't know about print writer uh, print writer is just a basic class you can say which allows us to write into a file and also provides us with few formatting options if you want to learn more about print writer you can go and search internet not much big of a deal it is okay so let's just quickly write all the three functions that we have by looking at the class diagram so public void log withdraw okay it will take a string account and of course the amount how much it amount has been withdrawn so amount okay so 
since we want to write to the file, so print writer dot println is the function that allows us to write to the file name of uh, to the file. So let's just write withdraw account. Okay. So let's just print withdraw from account, which account and how much withdrawal. So account plus and the amount, let's just print the amount. Okay, great. So I think we are done with the log withdraw. Uh, similarly, let's quickly make the other functions which are log deposit and log transfer. So public void log deposit will take a string account. Uh, it would be similar function, just the deposition would be there. So let's just quickly copy and paste and deposit instead of withdraw we would be deposit and the last one would be log transfer so public void log transfer string sender other would be receiver and the third one should be amount so double amount and we just print print writer dot println transfer sender plus receiver yeah, amount great i think we are pretty much done with the logger uh, let's play with this a little bit in the main function so let's make three loggers logger logger one equals new logger uh, let's make one more logger so logger logger two equals new logger let's make one more logger okay so since we wanted to print or we wanted to log everything in one single file uh, we have made three loggers and we want all of them to log into the single file right so let's just log a few things so let's log this okay so let's log all of this okay let's run the main function and let's see okay we have run the main function now you can see we have this log.txt file let's open this and let's see what is printed over there okay i'll open it sideways so that we can see okay so ideally what should have been printed okay i'll open logger also below so the first command was log deposit deposit is this one so what should have been printed deposit opening bracket then the amount account is 0001 and the amount is 80.5 so something of this sort so deposit and then account is 0001 and 80.5 so something of this sort should have been printed but clearly this has not printed then in the other line then logger dot log withdraw so withdraw for withdraw we should have been printed something of this sort withdraw in brackets there should be account number 0002 so it should be like this withdraw two and the amount should have been 100 so we are seeing total chaos in this log file why is it so since there are multiple instances of logger class, which are performing concurrent writes, each logger instance has its own print writer object, and they are writing to the same log file concurrently. The write operations can overlap, and this has resulted in a disordered log file. When multiple loggers are writing to the same file simultaneously, the order in which the write operations are executed becomes non-deterministic. So this can lead to logs from different loggers being interspersed, causing chaos in the log file. So how to optimize it? If we have just one logger instance and that is being used all across the program, that will solve our issue. So how do we stop user from creating an instance? The first approach which comes to the head is to make the constructor private. So let's make another logger class. Let's name it singleton logger. I'm copy pasting the same thing over there also. The file is, let's name it singleton log. So first is that we have to make this constructor private. Okay. 
if we have meet constructor private the question that will come to your head is how would we get the instance because we want to call these functions and without having the instance of logger we would not be able to call these methods we know that static methods are the ones which belongs to the class and we can call static methods using the class we need not have object for calling the static methods so we'll make a static method public static so we have to return singleton logger here let's name the method as get instance we can straight away return singleton logger new singleton logger so now if we want to create an instance of singleton logger we just need to call the get instance method so we got singleton logger but there's one more issue here whenever we are calling this get instance method we are every time making a new instance of singleton logger so this doesn't actually solve the issue we want to create singleton logger only for the first time and then we want to return the same logger every time to have it we have to store somewhere whenever we create that logger so let's store it in the class itself private singleton logger equals null so what we can do is we can check if my singleton logger is null then in that case i'll initialize it otherwise i'll simply return if singleton if this is equals equals null we have to make it static we would initialize it singleton logger equals new singleton logger and we can simply return singleton logger let's move to the main method now we'll again create the same three instances we'll call the same method again and we'll compare the result so okay great we are logging the same things that we logged with the previous logger and let's now compare both the results it has successfully compiled we have this log.txt and we have the singleton log.txt clearly singleton log.txt publishes the right result this makes sure that we are providing the single instance every time moreover you can check it that if this is equal or not so let's print and check if singleton logger 1 is equals to singleton logger 2 so let's run it and now let's see you can see both the loggers are same now whatever you see here is a singleton design pattern so what is singleton design pattern so first of all this is a creational design pattern secondly this pattern involves a single class which is responsible to create an object while making sure that only single object gets created and we have seen it we have checked it that single object was being created every time so this is what we call as singleton design pattern now consider this as a multi threaded application do you think this will work or not take a pause right here cool i'll see you in the next lesson thank you do you think it will create only one instance of logger of course we'll have a multi threaded application so let's say two threads come till this point now they went inside they both checked this condition they both found that okay logger is null right now so what did they do they went inside and they initialized logger so both the threads this one and this one have initialized twice so two loggers are floating and then we return logger there are two loggers three threads came in four threads came in so in a multi thread application this is actually not creating one instance to prevent this let's make this function synchronized now since we synchronized let's say three threads came simultaneously at this function by synchronizing it only one thread can go inside rest two of the other threads would be waiting right here once this thread completes the entire function it will come out then the next thread will get access to go inside then this next thread would get access to go inside what do you think about this will it take time yes it will waste a lot of time because if you see this is the critical section not this one so ideally what we should be doing is we should allow only one thread to go inside this piece of code rather than synchronize this complete function 
Let's not synchronize this complete function. Let's just synchronize this piece of code. Okay. So now, when should we allow to go inside? First of all, if the logger is null, then only a thread should be allowed to go inside. So let's synchronize this. Synchronize logger and then we go inside this. Now let's initialize it. Now if you see what will happen, let's say again two threads came. We checked that, okay, logger is null. Okay, so both of them came inside, right? Now only one of the thread would be allowed to go inside. So now the thread went inside. It initialized this and it came outside. And of course, the last statement would run. It would come outside. Now my second thread, this is already here. Now it will be allowed to go inside and this will again run the statement. So two loggers would be created. Again, there's not one instance of the logger. So what to do? So even here, we should have a if block that if logger equals equals null, then only do this, then this will work. So let's just implement this in the code. Let's come back to code and let's just make the changes. So if logger is equals equals null, then synchronized logger, what to do now? If my logger equals equals null, then only initialize it. So now this would only create one instance of the logger. And now let's just check if everything is working fine or not. Okay, so there's an issue cannot enter synchronized block because is null. So instead of synchronizing this, let's just synchronize the complete class singleton logger dot class. Yes. And this will work. Okay. So this has compiled. Let's see the files. Yes. The file is again the same. Okay. I hope you would have got this problem and you would have understood singleton design pattern, what singleton design pattern is and how it helps in creating only one instance across the application. Okay. If you have any questions, you can post in the discussions panel below. We'll try to answer them ASAP. Which all applications can it be used? It can be used for resource sharing, right? We, if we want global access to one object, there also we can use singleton design pattern. For thread safety also we saw, we can use singleton design pattern. So if we talk about some real world applications, one of the real world applications, database connection, that is quite expensive, right? So we would want to create database connection only once in the entire application. So singleton pattern is very widely used in database connection. Cache management. Cache management is also a place where singleton design pattern is used. This is an exercise for you, which you have to do as a homework. If you have understood rightly, make a small program for cash management. I hope you would have understood. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next chapter.